start with some vocabulary today before I get going with some new theorems and facts. So in previous lessons, I have spoken to you. Okay, that's not the best. Looks like the circle is further away. But I've spoken to you about this line and that this line is called a tangent. If it touches the circle at just one point. But I do want to ask again, what is the blue line over there? Tell me in the chat what that blue line is. Okay, let's have a look at the chat. It's the radius, yes. So one of the things we're gonna look at today is what is the relationship between the tangent line and the radius? So that's one thing we're going to look at. Um, again, the green thing is the tangent. What is the name for the red line in, in the second drawing? What do we, we think the name of that is? Okay, Andile, Chrissy, Tendai, Epeleng. So that is called a chord. And another thing we're going to investigate today is the relationship between the tangent to a circle and the chord that comes from that point of tangency. So when a tangent um, meets the circle, the, the one point it meets at is called the point of tangency. Okay, then the last thing, I don't think we're going to get to this, or we might get to it today actually, is if we have a point outside the circle and it makes touches the circle at a point of tangency on either side, this is a little bit weird, I guess. So then those um, tangent lines are going to make, they're going to be equal in length. So basically, if you have a tangent from a common point outside the circle, if you have tangents from a common point outside the circle, the length of these tangents or these arms are going to be, are going to be equal. So I'll show you that later in the, in the lesson, but just it's nice to kind of see it up front. Um, one last bit of vocab. If I take the red line, the chord, and I use it as a base, and I do this. What is it called when I'm using the blue lines like that on the red with, with a base? Who would like to come online and tell me what's the mathematical word for kind of making this angle with the red chord as a base? I see Fateko has got an answer in there. Anybody who wants to come along and give us the audio on that or put it in the chat. Okay, Chrissy agrees, Isa agrees. So you're all correct. The red chord is subtending or being the base for an angle at the circumference of the circle. So we call that an angle at the circumference, but it's subtended by the chord. And the angle down here between the tangent and the chord, we talk about the angle between the tangent and the chord, and then the angle subtended by the chord. Uh, and that's something which we'll talk about today in more detail. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of upfront preview of the vocabulary we're using. You don't have to know everything I talked about there, but if the words are familiar to you, just give, it, give me a thumbs up. If the words are unfamiliar to you, give me a thumbs down. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so let me show you, there's a couple of um, people who haven't heard of the words, but let's just have a look at an uh, tangent, um, subtend, those types of things. Let's have a look at the first theorem for today, or the first fact that you need to learn. But let's, I like to play with my animation. So have a quick look. This line over here is gonna be the tangent line, the one that I'm going to stretch out. Look how I can make the tangent line longer. And then if I want, I could also make the circle bigger or smaller. This really is a fun thing to play with. But what do you notice about the relationship between the tangent line and the radius? Okay, Mosima, what do you notice? 
Hi, sir. Hey, Mosima. Oh, sir, what I notice is that the radius is perpendicular to the tangent, which forms a 90 degree angle. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. And notice how I can take the point on a journey and the relationship stays at 90 degrees. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you, Mosima. You're welcome. So one of the students in the chat asked to just show what subtendon angle means. So if I have a, a circle and let's say I have a chord, if I use that chord as a, as a base, if, if I use the endpoints of that chord as a base to make an angle in the circle, we call that subtending or building an angle based on that chord. In this case, we would say the chord subtends an angle at the circumference. Okay, so I hope that's helpful for, for students who are asking about that. Now, this is the new fact for today, or one of the new facts. And it's kind of weird when you think about it, but you can see it's true. So what, what do we call it? Again, the, the theorem name is just the tan radius theorem for obvious reasons. It's a relationship between, um, between the two. But how would this look in a question? So let's go to a, a question. And what I want you to try and do is I want you to try and do question one for me. So I'm giving you a drawing and you are going to try and find for me the, well, you're going to do question one and you're going to try and find the size of angle A. See if you can use the idea that I just showed you to find what the size of angle A is in this drawing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I see a couple of answers coming in. Keep those answers coming. Okay, 18 seems very popular. Would anybody be able to explain how you got 18? Who feels like sharing their thinking? Uh, let's go to Liolo. Uh, how's it going? Hi, sir. You hear me? No, I'm fine, you. Very good. What's your thinking um, here? Sir? Uh, what I did was I put I I took the four A and the A yeah. and I added them together. Okay. And I also took the ninety. What? Where is it ninety? Just so we can make sure everyone's with us. Where is the ninety? It's by B, sir. Aha! So this is the tangent, and then this one yes, over sir. here is the radius, and so we recognize that this must be ninety. Okay. And then yes, what sir. did you do? And so after. And so after I got like the 5A, I put um, 90 degrees is equal to 5A. Okay, how did you know that 90 was equal to 5A? Just to, again, to make sure everyone's following us. What did you um, use? Sir. What fact? Sorry, sir? What fact or what idea did you use to know that 90 was 5A? Uh, no, sir, because uh, I, I first started by doing this. I said 90. 90 degrees plus 4A plus A is equal to 180. Ah, okay. I see what you did. So you said, you know, that's equal to 180 because the sum of angles in a triangle then took away 90 from both sides. And that's how you got your 90. Perfect. Okay. Last step. Yes, sir. And then, sir, I divided by five on both sides. Okay. And so that and is where... 18. Five times eight is 40. Yes. So we get 18 degrees. Very cool. I understand. And I think it looks like from the chat, everybody is with us on the journey. So very cool. All right. Question number two. I would like you guys to try and find me X, Y, and Z. So in question two, the angle X is here. 
the angle Y is there and the angle Z is in here. I want to see, can you find what X, Y, and Z is? If you're unsure, you feel free to ask a question by raising your hand or putting it in the chat. But I think you probably could have a go at this already. So could the, the line of A and C be the radius two? This is for question one. Uh, so A and C, I'm just going back to what Beverly's question. Oh, O and C. O and C. Oh, no, no. So Beverly, in this question one, this line would be a radius. And this blue one would be a radius as well. So those two go from the center to the edge of the circle. Now, that might be a helpful idea in the second question as well, now that I look at it. I said this in lesson one, these, these isosceles triangles pop up everywhere in circles because of the radii. So let's, let's actually zoom in on number two to give it a full attention. Pleasure, Beverly. I'm glad I could help. <laughs> Rafense, don't worry. Um, Rafense, where would you start? Where did you start? Uh, I think I agree with you on X is 40. I mean, there's a couple of things you needed to know before that, but would you like to tell us how you got X is 40? I don't think you're that confused. Uh, yeah, so Rafense, just put your hand up and we'll come to you. And you can tell us how you got X is, is um, 40. Yeah. Hi, Mr. You... How's it going? Tell me what how you got to X. Um, somehow I just figured out that Z plus Y is 90 degrees. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, Z... Z plus Y is 90 because that is the theorem we were talking about. Here's the radius. Here's the tangent. So that is oh. 90. Yes. And, and then I said 180 minus 90 minus 50 over 40. So you took the, the, let's say, the 50 down here and then the 90 up there and said, okay, well, X must be 40. Yeah. Completely fine. Awesome. But now but we have to find what <laughs> Z and Y. Z and y. Yeah, no. I see what you mean. Yeah. But at least you've got at least you've got X. We can hand yeah, over to someone else for for X and Y. Pleasure. Kat, what do you think? Could you help us with X and Y? Um, hi, sir. Can you hear me? Hey. Any ideas so... for X and Y? So since the radii for OB and OT are equal, I uh -huh. said that the base angles are also equal. I think you're onto something. I see it now. I call them whiskers. You've spotted the whiskers of equal length. Talk me through how you got Y now. And then I said 50 plus or Y plus Y is equal to 100. Yeah, so you're using the idea that the sum of the triangle is 180. And I assume you took away 50 from both sides and you added these two. Yes. Am I, okay, and your final answer for Y? Was 65. Awesome. So you got that these are 65. Now, what about Z? Could you get Z as well? I subtracted 65 from 90. Yes, and you would have got 25. So basically, you knew that this whole thing was 90. So if you take out the green, whatever's left is the, is the Z. Yes. Yeah, lovely. Uh, let's go to Cass. Cass, what's your question? Uh, hey, sir. So hey. my question is, can we use the converse tangent theorem to get Z? Okay, so the converse tangent theorem we're not actually doing it at the moment the 
the converse tangent theorem would, would say um, to prove a line is a tangent. Whereas this in this particular question, you are given a tangent. Does that make sense? There's a slight difference. Yeah. Okay. So you, cool. So, but I mean, do you have another question? Because that's, um, or is that, is that good? Oh, it's fine. Thank you. Cool. Uh, so then thumbs up, thumbs down um, about how you guys are feeling. All right. <laughs> Okay. Don't worry. Those who are, who are struggling, just hang in there. We, we, we do repetition. We do lots of repetition here. So we're going to start on question three. And all I'm going to say to you about question three is I want you to find me the value of E and find me the value of C. And if you are very confused, why not just ask, come online, maybe ask a question and we can chat through something. Uh, or you can ask me a specific question. And while students are working on this, I will try my best to help you. Uh, but I'm sure I can help you. Okay. So the question from Sonic, I'm just going to zoom out for a second so that I can see the other question. So remember, we are doing at the moment, we are actively doing three, but I'm just explaining something. So uh, Sonic, how did we get Y and why are the two lines equal? Okay, so Sonic, if you look at a circle, if you have a radius and it goes to there, it's a certain length. If a radius goes there, these are gonna be equal no matter what, because they're radii. And so if you join them, you have what's called an isosceles triangle, which means that the base angles must be equal as well. I hope that helps. Uh, Oretile, let's go to you. What's your question? Um, uh, hey, Emilia. how's it going? I'm good in you, sir. Not too bad. What can I help you with? Um, going back to number two, I think I really yeah. don't understand um how they got the angles for 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 Z. I understand X because it's more it's more yeah. simpler, but for Z Y, I really don't understand. I understand that it's night. The whole angle is equal to ninety, but yes. Problem is, I couldn't see the the shape of how B, uh, the triangle BDO was formed, and I I really couldn't also see the tangent and the radius. Yes. Okay. So what I'm going to say is that imagine this blue dot over here. Yes. And then imagine the green dot next door. I'm not sure if I'm doing this that well. I'm trying to make it nice and big. Are you okay that the green dot is 65? Do you believe that's like, can you see how I get, get that to be 65? Yes, because when you add 65 and 25, they give us 90. Yes, exactly. Well, well, actually, you know what? So first what happened was this was 65 and this was 65 and this was 50 together give us 180. Yes. And then you also know that the red angle will be 90 in total. So the way you get the Z is you say, I know I've got 90. I take away the big green dot, which is 65. And what's left behind, it's just going to be the 25. So that's why this has to be 25 there. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. So let's have a pleasure. Let's have a look at number three. I was thinking 5e plus e must equal 90 because I have the same tan and here's the radius. So then 5e plus 1e is 6e is 90, which means 90 divided by 6 is e. So that's 15. 
So E is 15, which is this blue dot in here. And then on the other side, uh, 5E would just be 75 because together they have to give you the 90. Um, what about C? How would we find, how would we find C? Let's go to Letty. Okay, hi, sir. Hey, Letty, what, how do you think we get C? So I'm assuming that OB and OD are equal, therefore both sides are 75, and then therefore C is 30. I agree with you completely. How did you know that OB and OD are equal? So because they're on the same, I don't know, I just assumed. You no, know, you're right. So the reason is of the radii. So can you see they both come from the center of the circle? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's like the whiskers. These whiskers oh, are basically telling you that this and this are equal. And so you're quite right. If, if the one is 75 and the other one is 75, then what's left behind after you've taken away 75 twice? 30. Is, yeah. So it's just going to be... C is going to be 30 degrees. Yeah, and that is awesome. Uh, Ayabongas asked, sir, why is 5E plus E equal to 90? So uh, Ayabonga, this is what's called the tan radius theorem. So if we have a circle and we have a tangent to that circle and it touches the circle at the point of tangency, then the the, line, the tangent will be perpendicular to the radius. That is a theorem. Um, I'm not doing proofs in this course because, again, it's one of those things, or all converses, we're really focusing on the fundamental pictures that you need to learn for circles. And then once you've got that, we build on top of that. Okay, so that's the recipe for success in this topic. But you do need to know the facts. And so this is called the tan radius theorem, and that's how you get it. All right. Uh, everyone, I think that we have done very well in this first bit of the lesson. So we've done the tan radius theorem. It is time for us to click save as and have a break. So will you please join me in standing up and uh, just stretching yourself out for a bit. And I'm going to do the same because my legs are starting to get stiff as well. Please turn on your cameras, guys. Let's see your lovely faces. Okay. What should I start with first? Um, I think we should do some small circles and then make them slightly bigger and then make them nice and big so that you're rotating your, your arms. And then swing your arms from side to side like you're a swimmer at the olympics have you ever seen when they do this thing they go and they start swinging <laughs> arms like so you're hard the hardcore the swimmers <laughs> yeah, and then side to side so twist your body a little bit and then let's roll our shoulders back one two three four Five. Okay, let's stretch out some muscles. So let's do the stretch. So one, two, three, four, five, and then other arm. One, two, three, four, five. And then just shake your body out a little bit, loosen it up. Feel that circulation going around. Maybe lift your legs up a little bit just so that your toes don't feel neglected. And then I think we need a bit of a heart rate push. And I'm open to suggestions for other exercises. They do have to be safe. Um, but I think for now, I'm going to stick with my jumping jacks. So let's do 10 of them together. Uh, and we'll start in three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay. Let's sit back down again. And if you have some water, uh, grab a glass 
a sip of your water. Fenton says he thinks the breathing exercise is <laughs> <laughs> So I am, I'm doing the two oceans half marathon in a month and I really do need to get training. So <laughs> I think the exercise um, additions are going to only get bigger from here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. uh, let's have a go at this little puzzle. So I add um, five to nine and get two. The answer is correct, but how? Who has any ideas? Here's a bit of mystery, but we call this pleasant confusion, as opposed to sort of stressful confusion. I add five to nine and get two. The answer is correct, but how? <laughs> Zambisila, I see your suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I think breathing exercises will do. <laughs> The problem is you, we know that getting circulation in our body is just so helpful. So that's, even though it, it does look a bit silly at times, there's actually a method to this. Because if people sit for too long, their brains just like honk out. Um, Mr. Yes, would you like to give the people a clue? <laughs> hint. Okay, I'll give you a little clue. Think of a circle. Think of a circle. You know, like today is about circles, right? So think about a circle and how... That might be helpful. And I don't want to take too much time, but uh, this is a interesting question. I see Olam. <laughs> <laughs> Circle's not helping. Okay, how about if I do that, it's not make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. They definitely missed the Maths 24 today, Mr. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. We'll bring it back. Oh, Cass, I think you might be onto something. And Toma. There's a couple of students. There we go, guys. Lineo. All right. So the answer to this is if you start at nine o'clock and you go to 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. And so that is how you add five to nine and get two because not all number systems are base 10. A clock is base 12. And so things can get a bit sneaky. So. I think <laughs> I think I loved how this was circle a circle themed quiz question. I think we did well with that. I like it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Um, do a last little shake out or have a sip of water. We're about to go for part two of today. And part two starts with the following idea. It's actually a bit of an easier idea. Uh, so let's have a look. Okay, so if you look at this point outside the circle, here's what we call the common point, and it's got two points of tangency on the circle. Watch what happens if I drag it closer, if I change the point of tangency, and watch what happens if I move it around. So it's almost like tangents from a common point have some sort of relationship. The common point is here. Who would like to try and explain what this, this theorem or, or tangents from a common point theorem is saying? So Chrissy and Letu and Batejo have, are saying they're the same. So what is the same? I, kinda, I know I'm being difficult, but like what is the same? Toboko, let's go to you. 
Hi, Sla. Hey. How would um, you explain the, the set? Um, the the length are the same no matter um how long or how short they are, or how you okay. short you reduce them. Yeah. So basically, no matter where the common point comes from, the length of the tangent or the length of the line from the common point to the point of tangency will be equal. And that sounds like a bit of a mouthful, but basically it's going to form an isosceles triangle um, if between those two, those two arms are essentially going to be the same length. And that's called tangents from a common point. And yeah, it's just another useful fact or theorem we need to know about the relationships between tangents and circles. Thanks, Dubokho. Okay. So let's go and have a look at a question that is related to this idea. So how about you guys work out what f, what f is down here and what g is up here. And I want you to notice the things that are the same or in common from the previous thing. Okay, Letty, let's go to you. Hi, Letty, what are okay. you think? Okay, so um, I think that F is 50, because if they're the same size, then it's going to be 180 minus 80 divided by 2, which is 50. Okay, so let's do 180 minus 80 is 100, and then basically you have to share the 100 between the two angles, so you get 50 and 50. And F is one of those 50s, so F is 50. Yes. I completely agree with you. Do you have any ideas of how we can get near G? Yes, so um, I think that since they're on the same, I don't know what you call it, so radical radius, it has to be yeah. 90 degrees, therefore G is 40. Okay, so let's just go and find the different things. So here is my tangent line. And this thing over here is my <laughs> radius line. And what the first theorem today said was that that has to be 90. And you are then saying, look, I know that this is 50 and this is 50. So I can use that to help me get what G is. And what did you say G was? Well, I think we've lost you there. So G was 90 minus 50 is what I remember, which is 40. So you used the tangents from a common point theorem to start to find out that F was 50. And then we used the tan radius theorem to know that G was 40. There were other ways to do it, but that was the way that um, was suggested. Okay, let us try and do question number five. So for question number five, you need to find, for me, uh, you need to find, let's have a look, make sure we can actually do this. What have we got? We've got that, that, and then, I think we have covered enough theorems. Yes, we have. Let's have a crack at this one. I'm not sure, I might have to introduce another theorem, but let's see if we can do it using what we've got here. If we get stuck, I'll introduce another theorem. I was just thinking we could start with K. That looks achievable. And then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Letty, what do you what do you think? Um, okay, so I think that K is 40 because 70, 70 degrees is for both sides, so 70 this side and 70 that side. 
Their 4K is 40. Okay. And, and then so you're H- saying 70 and 70 is 140. Yes, sir. So, so let's just for a moment. So 180 minus 140 is 40, which makes this 40 degrees. So K is 40. Yes, sir. I'm happy with that. Um, now, what were you thinking about uh, next? H. Um, so I think that H is 20 degrees because it's supposed uh-huh. to give us an but here's the sneaky thing. Here's I, I sort of am with you, but then I remembered mm-hmm. something. I was looking for the radius, and it turns out the radius has to go to the center of the circle. And yet there's no center of the circle here. Can you see that? Like, yes, if sir. we had a radius, it has to go to the center of the circle. So what I'm thinking now is we don't actually know that this is 20. Uh we might need some more information. Now, I think I might actually have to introduce a new theorem here, but maybe I'll, I'll just give a little bit more time. Is there anything that I've missed uh, for, for this one? I don't think so. I know that, that this angle over here and this angle over here will be equal, but I think we actually need another theorem to help us here. For those who want to say H is 70, how would you get that? So the people who are asking, how did I get this 70? The reason that this is 70 here is that in the question, they gave us a pair of whiskers. Well, I shouldn't say whiskers all the time, but they gave us these equal sides. And so because those are equal sides, this and this will be 70, which means that's 40. But what we are stuck with now is that we don't have the tan radius theorem to use anymore because there's no center of the circle. So what I need to do is I need to introduce you to um, a new theorem because I don't see how we can figure H out. Some people are saying H is 110. The problem is H can't be 110 because we also have this bit over here. All right, so it's time to introduce the final bit of interestingness for today. So, Olwam, let's go to you. Um, so to find H, you could use um, what you call it alternate angles because um, the AB and DC will never touch in the sense. So alternate angles would give you the angle closed by um, D would make it um, what you call it 70 while learning with this, um, what you call it with this, what we just learned where they both sides are equal making that that angle 70 and H will be the same, which makes H 70. And then you add 70 plus 70 minus 180, giving you 40 for I. Okay. I almost agree with you. The problem is, the problem is that these are not going to be parallel. So this line over here and Mm -hmm. this line up here, there's no proof that those are parallel yet. So you you would need you would need to know they would need to have given you that that sort of thing. All right. Um, okay. So I just want to show you. There's another theorem I can show. Oh, um, let's go to import, and then I'm going to show you that theorem. But this is great debate. I love how we're trying to get this question. And Paul, what do you think? Hi, sir. So, sir, hey. what if you say that uh, since that angle D, sir? Uh, it must be 90 degrees. We can say that uh, the entire the label part which you label with red is 60 degrees, and then H is 50. Okay, and here's the problem. Is, okay. So the problem is we, we still, the, the big thing that's getting us is there is no radius. And because there's no radius, there's no center point, we can't use the tan radius theorem. So that's what's catching us out. But I love that we're, we're, we're seeing this. So let me show you the theorem that we need. There's three theorems that relate to tangents and circles. And I want to show you the final one. So let me go to the top here to my animation. And let us look at um, 
at this animation and then we'll come back to, to solve that problem. But we're gonna spend most of the next lesson on this type of problem. Um, okay, so everyone have a look. Here is my tangent and my tangent makes an angle with between the tangent and the chord. So it's gonna be the 63 is the angle between the tangent and the chord. So I'll even draw it on the side here. So if I have a circle and then I have a tangent coming along and then I have this chord, in this case, the red one over here is 63. Now notice how if I take that chord and I subtend an angle, uh, in the other segment, on the other side, that is equal to 63. So that's the one thing. Then the same thing happens on this side. Look at the green angle. So say, for example, here's the tangent and here's another chord. This is 59. This chord subtends the angle over here, which is going to be 59. Now, if the statement holds true, I should be able to move these things around. So let's see what happens. Let's move it to here. Are you guys happy that the green ones equal the green ones and the red one equals the, oh, wait. So look at how I'm moving the tangent around the circle and the point of tangency is changing, but the relationship between the green one, which is the angle between the line and the chord is equal to the other green one. So if we take this idea and we take it, so this is called the tan chord theorem. And the reason it's called the tan chord theorem is it's about the relationship between the tangent and, and a chord. So let's have a look at this picture and see if this can help us. So in this question, it's five. Let's go and see what we were doing. So in question five, at the beginning of the question, we were all happy that that was true. But now I'm thinking, if I have a tangent that goes like this, and then it makes an angle with this chord here, I think that's the relationship between a tangent and a chord. Now, I'm going to make an angle at the circumference. And what the theorem was saying is a bit what the blue dot's saying. So what is H going to be equal to? What is H going to be equal, do you think? Okay, yeah. So everyone has said that that one over there, the two blue dots have to be equal. If we were writing the answer out in full, we would just say H is 70 because of the tan chord theorem. And that's great news because if I know that that's 70, now I can solve for I. So I want everyone to try and solve for I for me now. So I've, we've used a new theorem, H is 70. Can you find what I is? So Fatech was asked, how is H 70? So um, Fatech, what we're doing is we're using what's called the, the tan chord theorem that I've just shown you. I'm going to repeat it lots of times in the next lesson, but it basically says that the angle between the tangent and a chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment, which is the one up here. So the two blue dots are going to be equal. Uh, and so that's called the tan chord theorem. But I will talk about that and we'll practice it more. So now I was thinking C is the point outside the circle, 
which is a tangent from a common point. And so that must be 70 as well. So if I wanted to be snazzy, I could say BDC is equal to 70 tangents from common point. I'm just putting the reasons in now just to give you the feel for it. What is I going to be equal to? What is I going to be equal to? Oh, wait. Sorry. Good point. So um, and Paul has realized that these two are equal and those two are equal. The key thing in Paul is that they're not equal to each other. Two, two lines are equal to two lines and one line is equal to one line. The These two next to each other are not equal to each other. But thank you for spotting that. So what is I going to be equal to? I is going to be equal to 180 minus 70 minus 70, I think, because those are the two, which is 40. And if I was putting the full reasons, I would just say sum of angles, sum of angles in a triangle. And so this one down here would be 40 degrees. So we are getting a little bit tougher now, but at the same time, you, you did so well today. I just thought, yeah, like, we'll give you some time to think about these ideas um, and so and apply them. Okay, let's do one more question together, and then I will take some questions about this. Uh, let's do one like an easy one based on the tan chord theorem. Okay, so here is a picture. It says that PQ is a tangent to the circle. So PQ is a tangent to the circle. Find the size of angle ACP. Now, angle ACP is going to be that one. Tell me in the chat what angle ACP is going to be equal to. This theorem comes in very handy when you don't have a center of the circle. You'll notice in this question, there's no center of the circle. So what is angle ACP going to be? Would anybody like to come online and tell us? So I see in the chat, everyone is saying it's 34 degrees. And you're quite correct, it is 34 degrees. Because you the angle between the tangent PQ and A is the same as the angle that is subtended on this side by the green cord. Uh, let me give you, um, see if I can do... Um, let's do number seven. And then Fatehu, I'm going to come to you now. So everyone, I want you to try and do number seven. And to do number seven, you have to find X. And you also have to find Y. And Fatehu, let's go to you. What is your question? Hello, sir. Okay. So on the previous one we just did now. Yeah. So if if a if angle ACP is equal to 34, does that yeah. mean angle B C Q will equal to angle A? Perfect. I could not have said it better myself. So you have completely understood the tan chord theorem. And the reason is for Deco is that here is the tangent, here is the chord. And notice how this then subtends the angle A using BC as its base. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, sir. I see it. It works from both sides. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Pleasure.
Let's go to number seven and give it our full attention. This will be our last one for today. We've worked, we've covered so much. Goodness gracious. Mr. Yes, we have yes. a hand from Letty. Okay. Letty, what do you have? Um, what do you think X or Y? Could you help us? Okay, so um, I think that X is 50. Okay. And what did you use and to then, get that? So I used the, the, the angles that you showed us, the triangle. Yeah. That, yeah. So here's the chord and there's the tangent. So that's the 50 that you, and what is it equal to? It's equal to the, ta the, the angle that we subtend using that, that chord. And sometimes we talk about the, this one being the angle in the alternate segment, because the segment is, there's like a, is the one piece on the side and the one piece on the side. So you write X is 50. What do you think yes, Y sir. is? Um, so for Y, I use the straight line method, which is 180 minus 62 minus 50. Richard, 68. 68. So I'm pretty sure that's correct because it makes complete sense. Let's just check it. I was thinking, could I work out this angle P? I could go 180 minus 62 minus 50. And what do we get if we do that? We get uh, um, 68. And then I can say that this is probably harder than your way. I think your way is probably better. <laughs> but I just want to show you that it does work. So here's a tangent. Here's the chord. And so if we subtend the angle on this side, can you see that 68 or angle P will be equal to the angle Y? Are you with me on that? Okay, I think maybe I've lost you there. But... Um, the idea, kind of going back to what Fateka was saying, is that earlier on, is that this red dot is equal to that red dot, and then let's say this blue dot here is equal to this blue dot here. And that essentially is the tan chord theorem, but I do think that Letty's idea of using the angles on a straight line is quicker and easier. So both are full marks, but that's probably easier. All right, Lebo, could you please put the um uh what's it called survey link the poll. yeah <laughs> the the chat. i'm losing my words and um <laughs> yeah thank you everyone i think you've done really well tonight like honestly you've covered all the relationships between tangents and circles and so in the next lesson what we're going to do is i'm i'm going to start um we'll practice a bit more of tangents but then I'm even going to start to bring it all together for you. Um, and you've done really well. And I think if you're still going to do the section in class, these six videos are going to make you superstars at this section. Um, there are things called converses, which I haven't touched on. And there are things called proofs. But again, once you have a good foundation in the visual parts, the rest becomes a little bit like learning work. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed by what we've been doing. I hope you've enjoyed it too.